All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this live webinar. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Raquel Rodriguez, the Events Manager here at Security Compass, and your host for today's webinar. Before we get started with the actual content, I'd like to just give you a quick overview of Security Compass. For those of you who may not be aware of us until today, Security Compass was founded in 2004 and began with a team of experienced penetration testers. Today we have come far and work with many large enterprises globally to manage your cybersecurity risk through balanced development automation. When it comes to benefits at Security Compass, we have a lot to offer. Diverse and inclusive environment, flexible work hours, a dedicated training budget, and a high trust work culture, just to name a few. One other thing to mention, Security Compass has made the great places to work list more than once, which is quite the honor. Let's quickly go through some housekeeping items. As you might notice, you have all entered the session on mute to reduce background noise. Second, a recording of this webinar will be made available after today's event, and you will receive an email with a link to the recording. We will also be publishing this recording in the resources section of our website. Also, we encourage everyone to raise questions. Please submit your questions into the Q&A chat, and we'll address them during the Q&A session. Lastly, if you would like to follow up with us, please email us at careers at securitycompass.com. For today's webinar, we're going to take a closer look at expert tips on finding a job. I'm pleased to be here with Paula and Ramia, both people and culture partners at Security and Compass. Paula and Ramia, thank you so much for being here with me today. I know our audience is keen to hear your presentation, so I'll let you take it from here. Thank you, Raquel. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. I'm here with Ramia. We are both part of the Security Compass recruitment team. And uh, we would like to share with you some tips around resumes, interviews, and more. The idea of this webinar is to help you think like us and give you insights to increase your chances of finding a job. If you are a newcomer to Canada or was displaced by COVID-19 or don't know where to start your search or simply is looking for an expert tip, this is for you. Um, as Raquel mentioned, everybody's on mute, but you can submit your questions through the Q&A chat. Just before we start, uh, we are going to have a quick poll to help us understand why you are here today. So thanks for sharing. Um, we would like to start with uh, a few tips on resume. So uh, the first one is going to be quality versus quantity. Uh, some people believe that the biggest uh, number of positions they apply, the biggest is their chance to get picked by a recruiter, but that's not necessarily true unless you are customizing your resume to each opportunity. We recruiters, uh, we use a system called ATS, Applicant Track System, and that system will show us uh, how many positions you applied inside Secured Compass, were, uh, were those the same position, or they, uh, they are asking for different skills, and uh, you have to pay attention here because applying for different positions requiring very different skills could sound like a lack of focus or maybe you don't know exactly what you're looking for and that could actually decrease your chances of getting picked by a recruiter. So we recommend you applying only to positions where you have 60 or 70 percent match with the job description and customize your resume uh, to reflect what the, the, the job description is asking for. Um, why we say that? Because we want you to be more assertive. Uh, we usually do a keyword searching. We receive hundreds of resumes for each position. And uh, what we do is we, we put some keywords into our search, uh, like 
title and major skills, and that will bring only the resumes that have those kinds of um, uh, words, which means that, for example, if I'm looking for a Scrum Master, and although you are an Agile Project Manager and have the same attributions as a Scrum Master, if you don't list a Scrum Master in your resume, you may not get picked it up. So make sure that the title is there and also you are listing the major skills that we are asking on the job description. We also include besides the title some keywords on the, the keyword searching uh, that would be great if you have listed on your resume. And uh, it's also great when the recruiter looks into a resume that has the same title and similar skills, it's much easier uh, to say, hey, this is great and I'm going to call you. Uh, the other thing is uh, you have to make sure that your job title reflects the Canadian market. Um, maybe in some countries uh, the job title is different or you have a very creative job title. So make sure that uh, your the job title you're putting in your resume reflects the Canadian market. And how can you do it? Um, you can go to the LinkedIn and do a Boolean search. Uh, you can Google what's a Boolean search and uh, look for people that have the same attributions as you do and uh, see how they call themselves here in the market. It, this is also a great exercise because you can see how they sell themselves and what they put on the resumes and that could help you with ideas to improve your own resume. The other thing is you need to be concise. So usually a recruiter takes about 10 seconds to have a first look in your resume. If the title is matching, location matches, uh, industry and company, then we are gonna dig, uh, dip, uh, go deeper on your experiences. We recommend you to don't use more than 10 bullet points per experience to describe what you did, because otherwise your resume is gonna be too long and not as attractive as it could be. Also, a two-page resume is a pretty good size. Uh, if you have uh, an exp, if you have, um, uh, Sorry, if you have more experiences than two page, what you can do is you can summarize your past ones, listing just the title and the company and the dates to give the recruiter an idea on what you did in the beginning of your career, but you don't need to list everything. And uh, if you don't have any match between your recent experiences, let's say five years and the job description, this position may not be for you. So you can wait a little bit and try to find another position that will be a better match. Another tip that I can give is for some people that are working on a contract base, sometimes they have a lot of projects to list and the resume is going to be too long. So again, uh, try to list like one big experience. Let's say you have been a contract since 2010 up to today and then you can list. Okay, so I was a project manager on a contract base. That's what I did. And those were the main projects that this way you're going to summarize your experiences and give us a good idea on what you did. Mention relevant information. So for technical positions, certifications are very important. So make sure that you list the certifications that you took. And also, if you are, for example, on the sales side of the business, you can list your awards, for example, President's Club, or you can put your code attainment. That will give the recruiter a pretty good idea on your results. Uh, and the last one is create a clean resume. Your resume should be uh, inviting and, uh, and should look good. So make sure you have a reasonable size font because um, if you reduce a lot the size of your letters, it might be too small. I had a situation where the hiring manager couldn't read the resume and that was pretty interesting. So make sure you have a reasonable size letter. Also organize your experiences from the most recent to the past ones and um, avoid putting on the recent experiences, avoid putting only the title. So. Uh, it's not unusual for us to find resumes where someone put a, a big description of, of what they did their entire career and just list the recent experiences, including like um, 
title and dates. Make sure for the recent ones you include a description and you give the, the recruiter a good idea on what you did. Before we move forward, uh, there is another pool on your screen and uh, to let, let us know if you attach or not cover letter to your resumes. Great, so uh, I can see that the majority of you uh, attach a cover letter to your resumes. And uh, should you do it or not? That's always a good question. Um, it, there is no harm on attaching a cover letter, but for example, in the technology industry, we don't usually look into cover letters, we go directly to your resume. But I would say if you are applying to a more traditional industry, let's say like mining, uh, you might benefit uh, from attaching a cover letter. The only situation we strongly recommend you uh, attach it is when you don't have a solid experience or you don't have a solid resume. Let's say that you are a new grad and you don't have, you're looking for your first job. So make sure that you attach a cover letter saying why you are applying and why do you believe you are a good uh, fit for this job uh, to give the, the recruiter uh, an overview of uh, what made you apply. The cover letter should be very customized to your resume and to the job description, and that could take a long time. If you have time to customize every cover letter and every resume, great for you. Again, there is no harm on attaching a cover letter. If you don't have the time, you are applying for positions after work, uh, you can just prepare and customize your resume and you should be good to go. So I will pass right now to Ramya. Uh, she'll give you tips on interviews. Hey all, so I'm gonna walk you through a few tips and tricks on how you can best prepare for an interview and what important details you should mention during this process, as well as some do's and don'ts. So we're gonna be focusing on the first step of the interview process, the HR or the recruiter phone screen, as this is really the gateway into your interview process. However, many of these tips are gonna to apply to each stage. So a lot of the time people don't prepare for the first round as they're sort of thinking, oh, you know what? This is just a general high level interview, nothing that I really need to prepare for. However, people often forget that this is a first impression a company's gonna have of you. The phone screen can sort of be a make or break, so it's key, it's key to treat it with importance like you would all the other stages. So, you're invited to an interview, how should you prepare? The first place you wanna start is by researching the company, not just surface level, but truly take the time to understand what their offerings are. Get a glimpse into what their culture looks like. You can do that by going onto their website, look at Glassdoor, their LinkedIn page, including a good page which is LinkedIn Life if the company has that set up. Um, you can really see what the culture is like, the leadership team, how diverse the company is, and really see what they're all about. This also shows the recruiter your commitment and desire to get the opportunity. It's natural for us recruiters to choose people who are motivated by the job um, and to get the job. And one of the ways that you can show your eagerness is doing that preliminary research and really stating these key pieces. Another benefit of this is that you'll get to learn a lot about the company and you can ask more targeted questions to understand if the job is a good match for you. If you're in a position, for example, where you have multiple offers from different companies or you're in final stage with companies, um, you'll be able to gain more insight to decide what's best for you at this time in your career. You should also save the job description to uh, remember the employer's requirements so that you can initiate discussion about the most relevant facts and speak to what they're looking for more easily. Another important point to remember in the questions is that you might, the, all the questions that you might have for the recruiter. So what we recommend is for you to write these down. It's really easy to forget what they are in the heat of the moment and then you're sort of scrambling for words. It happens to the best of us. So we say write these questions down so that you're not getting off the phone screen and you're like, oh, I was meant to ask this question. If you know someone that works for this potential employer, that's always a bonus as you get a like, kind of like a little sneak peek into what the company is really like. You can pick your friend's brain about culture, 
growth opportunities, you know, what's important to you. They might not know all of the answers as they might be in a different role or a different department, but it's always helpful to ask. I'm kind of in two minds about whether you should reach out to someone you kind of know on LinkedIn for a coffee chat. I just feel like different industries do have di different etiquettes. So just do what feels right. I just think uh, be mindful of not accidentally, I don't know, putting a burden on someone. Just do what feels right for you within the industry that you're in. So what important details should you mention in an interview? For those who have had years and years of experience, Compressing this into a 20 to 30 minute phone screen can be difficult. Instead of going over every single bit of your work experience, try and find roles that are relevant to speak to. Typically, us recruiters will sort of run you through your resume and we'll ask you specific questions about specific jobs. But in case people, in case we don't, perhaps speak to the most recent role and then maybe your most relevant role. Your answers should be direct and include brief details about what you did, your accomplishments within that role and keep it simple. And most importantly, be cognizant of how long you're speaking. I've had phone screens where I speak for maybe 30 seconds in the beginning and then I literally can't get a word in until maybe the 20 minute mark. I often, I often have to remind candidates, hey, you know, we just have 10 minutes left of the call and sometimes that can give them this sort of like a little bit of a hint to keep their answers short and sweet, but not always. Also, don't be afraid to seek clarity on any question you're not fully sure what the recruiter is asking of you. You can also re repeat back what you understood to confirm that you're answering it correctly. Now, even if your past roles weren't the best experiences, we've all been there, no need to fret, but avoid being overly negative. There's ways to be honest and transparent without talking badly about your previous employer or company. For example, if your last company had some not so nice interactions, perhaps a toxic work environment, perhaps there was literally just no growth opportunities for you, but you would have enjoyed some parts of the role, you can maybe say, you know what, I learned a lot at XYZ company. There's a lot that I can take away from this, but you know what, you spend most of your working hours, um, your waking hours with your work colleagues, and ultimately it wasn't where I wanted to be going forward. I'd like to work for a collaborative team who respects one another in my next role. So see, you're, you're addressing what happened, but you're not being overly negative. Now, always be honest. You aren't expected to know everything. If you've never worked on something the recruiter is asking about, you can just say that you don't have experience in that particular area. Don't shy away from being honest if you don't know something. The worst thing to do is pretend that you do or giving a long-winded response when you're Googling at the same time. Yes, this happens. You might have similar experience to share, like for example, I'm gonna try and be really technical here, but uh, perhaps you're a DevOps candidate and you'll use some type of uh, container framework. For example, you've used Docker, but this particular company uses Ansible. Correct me if I'm wrong here. But you know, you can say, hey, you know, I've used Docker in the past. Um, I have never worked on Ansible, but I will, um, you know, I'm eager to learn and I'll do some pre pre preliminary research, YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. So just say what you don't know. Now, what makes a good interview? Usually a good interview is like a good conversation, right? Typically the recruiter will set an agenda at the beginning of the call and will point out that you'll be able to ask questions at the end. It's a good idea to ask these questions as it demonstrates your interest and your commitment to the role. Just make sure you're not asking questions just for the sake of asking questions. Questions like, what does the rest of the process look like? How would you describe the culture? What's your experience working at XYZ company? These questions are actually gonna help you and vetting the company and seeing if it's right for you. Now, interviews can almost be likened to dating, keyword almost, only in the sense that you should use it to learn more about the other side and understand if it's a fit for you. If it's not, that's okay. Thank them for their time and keep it moving. No need to waste their time or yours. The last thing you wanna do is be in a role that doesn't serve you or a relationship that doesn't serve you. Now be positive, sit up and speak. Interestingly, we can sometimes tell when people are lying down or they're slouched over their desk. If you're, or if you're fumbling about in the kitchen, we can hear like pots and pans. Like try not to do that, try and sit down, uh, be focused for your interview and try and maybe put your phone away or any devices away so there's no distractions. Now this one is important, be yourself. Authenticity is always key and you should find a company that allows you to be your true self. People that are truly themselves at work are usually, are usually happier and more satisfied in their job. 
Now, we're not all chatty Cathy's like me. So sometimes it can be a bit more difficult for someone to be to naturally sort of build rapport and it ends up being a little bit awkward. And that's okay, right? Do what feels comfortable for you, but just treat every step of the process with enthusiasm and eagerness if you're truly interested. Ending the interview with something positive like, hey, it was really nice talking to you or thank you for your time is also a way that you can do that. A thank you note is another strategy to create value and sending this like maybe two days later can keep you under the recruiter's radar and at the top of their minds. Anyway, thank you. And Paula, I'll pass it back on to you. Thank you, Ramya. And uh, before we move to the last part, we have a last question for you. Uh, do you ask people to submit your resume inside their companies or not? Great. Uh, we see that the majority of um, of you ask people to refer you inside uh, their companies, which is great. We recruiters, we love referrals and we love them for different reasons. The main one is because we believe that someone that uh, works inside our company knows what another person will need to succeed. Uh, Maybe we need to probe the technical part a little bit, but they know that the personal traits and the cultural fit are there, and that will put your resume one step, or one step up from the regular applicants, which is always great. Um, we truly recommend you asking for someone to refer your name if you have a match at least 60 or 70% match with the job description. You don't wanna put this person in an awkward situation, referring you to a position that you have no skills, no technical skills. So use those resource wisely and only ask when you have a match with the job description. And how can you do that? You can uh, reach out former colleagues that worked with you in the past and could talk about your work or a client or someone on, you can search people on LinkedIn uh, that work with you in different projects and can tell uh, another person about your work. So if you have the opportunity to leverage uh, your referrals, you should do it. It's a great way to start the process. So that's all we'd like to cover for now. And uh, we are going to give you some time to submit your questions through the Q&A chat. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much again, Paula and Ramya. That was a great session and included some great tips and tricks for interviews. Uh, like Paula mentioned, at this point, we would like to open it up to questions. So if you haven't had a chance to submit your question yet, please do so through the Q&A chat. Uh, we have a few questions that came in here. So I'll get started with the first one. It is, should I share my salary expectations when the recruiter asks? That's a great question. Um, I would I would say yes, you should because it's much easier for everybody to have, uh, let's say, a salary range to work with. Uh, what could happen if you don't share your salary range is that uh, the recruiter could go through the entire process, approve the entire approval process and offer you something that wouldn't make sense because they didn't know what your salary expectation was. So we truly recommend you giving us uh, at least a salary range. If you believe that your salary is higher than the market, what you can say is you give a salary range and say that it is negotiable, you are not not, I mean, you don't want to lose the opportunity uh, based on salary expectation, but this is what you had or something close to that. If you are new to Canada and you don't know uh, what your position, uh, I'm sorry, what your salary is here, you can go into Glassdoor and search for positions like yours and how much they are paying. There is a big difference between industries. So there are industries that have a lower pay and a bigger pay. So uh, go to the look into companies at the same industry that you are, and you're going to have an idea on the salary you should ask. Perfect. The next question that we have here is, 
Should I apply through the website or approach the recruiter slash hiring manager via LinkedIn? I can answer that one. Um, so yeah, I think that always, always, always apply through the website first. Like Paula said earlier on in the presentation, um, that you know most companies have an applicant tracking system. And if you, I don't know why I couldn't say that word, um, mm. but an ATS. And so if you um, apply through there, you're gonna have your resume looked at for sure or your application looked at for sure. Um, if you're putting it through LinkedIn, for example, like Paula and I, we get so many uh, LinkedIn and mails. Um, and so it can really easily get lost in there, right? So you want to, you can for sure apply through the website. So it's there, we definitely see your resume. Um, but then you can also follow up with a note, send us a note and just say, hey, I've applied for XYZ company, uh, well, XYZ position, uh, looking forward to hearing from you. So you can do a bit of both, but definitely always apply through the website. Perfect. Uh, the other question we have here is, are these tips useful for your second and third interview with the hiring manager? Uh, definitely some of them are. Um, and some are specific to the recruiter, but uh, for example, creating a rapport and uh, understanding and having your questions ready and understand the opportunity to ask good questions are tips that you can use for any interview. Uh, so, I mean, prepare yourself, ask questions, and uh, you should be in a good place. Perfect. Uh, we have another question here. It's how long is the entire interview process from start to finish? It really depends with different companies, right? Um, sometimes with critical roles, companies will take a bit longer um, because they want to make sure that they're making the right decision and there may be more stages in the interview process. Typically with us, I would say, um, I mean, right now it's a bit different. I think just to remember throughout COVID, um, companies are slow rolling a bit and it's going to take, you know, they're going to be a bit more mindful about the decisions that, that, that they make because, uh, you know, cost cutting, all that kind of stuff, right? So they might not be as quick to hire. Um, but just in general, I think that we take anywhere between two to four weeks um, from your uh, phone screen to the day that you get the offer. Perfect. Uh, so we have a couple more questions here. One question is, how many pages would you recommend a resume to be? A two-page resume is usually a pretty good size. Um, you don't want that to be too long, not too short. So if you could condense your experiences in two pages, uh, that would be great. Perfect. Uh, this another question here is related to salary. Um, they're asking about salary history. Should that be shared with the interviewer? I think this is it's hard because a lot of people I would say yes, um, they shouldn't, most companies, and I think it's a real like level of trust, right? Like I think security compass internally, we have a very high level of trust and people who do know us know that we won't lowball anyone. Um, but just in general, I think people are sometimes wary about sharing where they are now because perhaps, you know, you're in a role that you are underpaid and you know that you're underpaid uh, compared to the market. So um, I can understand why it's, maybe nerve wracking or you're like, you know, I'm going to sell myself short the minute I say that number. But honestly, like trust that people are wanting to do the right thing. I know sometimes that ha that is hard, but trust that they do want to share that and say, Hey, look, like, and you can maybe preface it with like, you know what, I think that right now I am not getting paid via market standards part. That's part of the right reason why I want to leave, but this is what I'm making right now. And this is what I want to make. Usually they, they will ask you those two questions. I'll ask you where you're at now. You know, what would you be looking for, for your next role? So, I think just being transparent is great. And if you want to preface that with, hey, I'm not happy with my current salary right now, and this is, and I wouldn't make a move for X, Y, Z salary, then, then do that. But definitely do share if you can. Perfect. Uh, this question has to do with the number of interviews. So they're asking if they should ask the number of interviews they're likely to do uh, during the entire interview process. Sure, um, there is no harm on asking that and you can prepare yourself and estimate how long it's gonna take. Um, so definitely it's a question that um, is valid. Perfect. Uh, one person asked here, if they're really excited about the role that's being discussed in the interview, is it good to express that? 
think you, yeah, you can. You can say, hey, like I was really excited about when I read about this role. I was so excited about applying for it. You can express that interest in your enthusiasm. But one thing that I'd say don't do is like once the interview's finished being like, uh, so um, how did I do in my interview? Like that's a big no-no. I think that, um, you know, if you, you'll know how you did in the interview if you get a call back, right? So um, just do the best you can, end it with a positive note. Obviously you can say that you're excited about it when you're on the phone screen, um, but I think, you know, just keep it as concise as possible, I guess. Perfect. And we have a couple more here, uh, just quickly before we wrap up. Um, one question was, what about listing volunteer experience or hobbies? Uh, I would say hobbies. Um, I, I don't believe you should put that in, in your resume. It doesn't really change a lot. Uh, but volunteer experience, uh, if your resume is not too long, you can definitely include it. It's always good to know that someone is volunteering to, to help someone else. Uh, so there is no harm in putting there. Perfect. Um, and we also have one question here. Could you please comment the most common questions in a job interview and tips about how to answer them? That's a hard question, only because different industries are going to have different common questions. Um, so I guess depending on your role and your profession and the industry that you're in, that's, that's really going to change, right? I think just in general, though, you want to talk about, you know, what your ideal next role looks like to you, what motivates you. Um, always have an example of, you know, a tricky or difficult situation that you were in and how you, how you overcame it. Um, maybe a difficult coworker and what you did there, um, those sorts of things, right? So those are like common, people are going to ask you those questions in different ways. Um, but those are common questions. And if actually, um, Google it, right? So there's going to be so much on Google about like, uh, typical interview questions. And I'm not just saying that to avert the question from me, but I think that, you know, the internet has a lot of resources around, uh, especially within the job that you're in um, or the profession that you're in and what typical questions are and make sure that you are looking at those questions and coming up with answers for those questions prior to going into the interview so that when you're in the interview, you're not, you know, you have examples locked and loaded so that you can just go on and answer them. Perfect. Uh, and we'll get to one more question here before we wrap up, but do you need to put references uh, slash references available upon request on your resume or just leave them out? Um, you can leave them out. Uh, you definitely don't want to put your references in your resume because you are exposing uh, someone else uh, data. So you don't need to put there, but uh, open, open request. I mean, we are going to request you anyway, if we need. So don't worry, you don't need to list it. Perfect. All right. Well, um, if we did not get a chance to answer your question, we will make sure to follow up with you when this webinar is over. Also, if you do think of any questions later on, please feel free to email us at careers at securitycompass.com and we will make sure to get back to you. Paula and Ramia, thank you so much again for a great session. I think it was very insightful and we can all leave with a lot of tips and tricks. We have webinars lined up for the next few weeks. So if you're interested in attending any of these webinars, please do go to the upcoming events and webinar section of our website to sign up. We hope that everyone found this presentation insightful. And again, we will provide a link to the recording of this webinar to everyone here via email. Thank you so much for attending today. Please stay well and safe and enjoy the rest of your day.